I'm Gavin Chukar, I'm the Labour and Cooperative candidate to be the MP here in Luton South. Uh, it's the Wednesday before Thursday of polling day and uh, we're here up in an area of the town which traditionally has been considered to be quite a swing area in Luton uh, with equal support between the Lib Dems, Conservatives and Labour mm. uh, giving the campaign an extra push to make sure that we're not just going to win uh, parliamentary seats but also local council seats and get some really good people on the council. Do you think it's a um, little too late to be doing as much as you're doing today? Well, we've of course been fighting this general election campaign, not even for the last six weeks, but yeah. probably for like the last five years. Um, one of the vagaries of the Fixed Terms Parliaments Act means that we knew the date of this five years ago. So we've been working up to it. Mm. The last 18 months has been really intensive. Uh, but the last six weeks of a campaign, you can contact almost as many people as you have done in the previous year. Mm. Uh, it's one of the ways in which Labour's made five million voter contacts since January. Mm. Um, we've helped to uh, add to this. But it's interesting, in this election, I think there's a lot of people that are leaving their decision late. And I want to make sure that I'm on their doorstep helping them to decide uh, the day before polling day and on polling day itself. Yeah. So you've been MP for Luton for the last five years now. How's it been like? And what are your thoughts of it? I mean, you grew up in Luton, but what has it been like being an MP for Luton? And also, what are you going to offer Luton and Luton residents in the next five years if you are elected? Well, I've lived in Luton pretty much all my life. Born yeah. here, went to school here, moved away and uh, moved back. And But seeing the constituency as an MP is a real privilege. I've served the people of Luton South for the last five years. In those five years, if I'm really honest, we've gone back on some really important things in Luton. We've gone backwards around uh, health, around education and around housing. These are bread and butter issues for the people of Luton. Mm. And my contention is simple in this election. When we have a Labour MP, a town like Luton uh, does better. And when we have a Labour government, uh, we do best of all. And so I'm fighting for both. Uh, obviously, myself and Kelvin Hopkins, the candidate in Luton North, to be re-elected. But also for us to have Ed Miliband in Downing Street, because if we can do that, uh, we can solve many of the big thorny problems that have gone backwards in the last five years. Right. Um, now, we all kind of know that um, Luton has a sizable kind of Asian population. What are you trying to do to reach out to this community who are kind of known for not voting and feeling perhaps, especially some youngsters in the Muslim community, feeling a bit marginalised and feeling disengaged with politics? What are you doing to try and reach out to these communities? Well, I've been unashamedly pro the diversity of our town. I think mm. Luton's a town um, that's proud of its history, and its history includes people coming from all around the world to live here. But mm. there are some real intractable issues mm. uh, in the heart of the community. Things such as decent housing, mm. uh, decent health care, decent education. All of those are difficult issues to get right, mm. um, but I've tried to fight for them and fight on those grounds. I think there's one other thing, though, that's at play in this election, because I think there's a lot of frustration, particularly amongst younger people, second, third uh, generation of immigration here in the town. Mm. And that is a sense in which politics doesn't necessarily speak to those people or work for them. Right. And all too often, politicians can treat the Muslim vote as a block uh, to be traded or to be uh, pleaded with. Mm. I don't believe in that. I think that everyone needs to make up their own minds. Mm. But I do think that if people look at our policies, they'll want to vote Labour. That's why there's been traditionally strong support in the community. It can go away very quickly unless you have an MP that is connected to the community and genuinely supportive. And that's why I've tried to do everything I can to make sure that our politics is as clean as possible mm. and where we're actually listening to the community and responding to their needs. What have they been telling you? What's the word on the ground? You've been out campaigning, you've been knocking indoors. What are residents here in Luton, especially some from the Asian community, what are they most concerned about? Particularly amongst younger um, Asian voters. Mm. Uh, there's a real concern, not just around foreign policy, you'd expect that. Um, the issue of Iraq comes up on the doorstep still mm. 10 or 12 years on, but actually Palestinian recognition, um, something uh, that my party is unashamedly for and I have responsibility for mm. uh, within my international development role. Uh, the issue of Kashmir as well, concerns about what's going on in the current political situation in Bangladesh. Mm. And I think that's interesting, isn't it? That it's not just the issues that affect us in the immediate but also globally as well, where you need to be able to speak to both. Yeah. Here locally, it's simple, isn't it? You want a decent place for you to live <laughs> that you can afford, where mm. you're not going to be ripped off by your landlord or you can buy. You need uh, decent education. You know, Reducing tuition fees is a big thing that we need to do, and we'll do it if we have a Labour government. Um, but also, we need decent jobs. Mm. And one of my roles as the MP for Luton South has been trying to attract more employers to the town to make sure it's not... 
the classic story of someone getting a decent education then heading off to London. Mm. We want to be able to have decent, well-paying jobs here in the town, and that's what I've been working for. Definitely, definitely. And just lastly, why should people vote? Um, I mean, this is probably a question you've been asked many, many times, but especially in this election, which is such a tight election at the moment, polls are kind of, all the time, they're going up one point, down one point, or tied, and, but there is a sense that people feel that just, you know, it's not going to really, their vote is not going to really make a difference um, if they vote whichever party, be it Lib Dem, Labour, Conservative, Either way, some people feel whatever they choose never, you know, never really represents what they um, come to, you know, what they've actually thought about, you know, beforehand, before sort of voting. Um, so, what I mean, what would you say to those disengaged, apathetic people who feel that politics doesn't really work for them? Well, two things we always hear on the doorstep yeah. uh, as people that are part of a political party and trying to bring their party into power. Mm. Uh, first of all... Um, you'll say one thing in opposition and then do a different thing in government. Mm. Interestingly, I think that is a much, much bigger issue this time right. round than it was five years ago. Mm. I would, this isn't a partisan point, but I would put that directly at the foot of Nick Clegg and his decision around tuition fees in particular. Right. Um, it's quite often what we find uh, there. But secondly, that all the parties are the same. Now, I find that difficult to understand because actually, probably for the first time in 25 years, maybe 30 years, there has been a bigger gap between the parties around what they're offering for the future mm. than ever before. Parties aren't converging in the middle. Actually, there's a very clear choice. Do you want deep and dramatic cuts in spending? Um, twice as deep as any previous year under the Tories. That's going to affect anyone that claims child benefit, uh, working tax credit, um, and the most disabled and vulnerable in our society. Versus, do you want a fair plan to get the deficit down? Um, but also responding to the needs of the N NHS and mm. education. Um, student tuition fees, issues that young people care about. I think that's a big choice in this election. And you've got two different leaders who have two different visions. So I'd encourage people to go and do their research. But I also, more than anything else, encourage them to vote. Because I tell you, um, different groups vote disproportionately. We know that if you're BME, mm. you're less likely to come out and vote. And therefore, politicians don't listen as hard as they should. <laughs> um, if you want to get change in this country, you've got to come out and vote for it. Mm. And you've got to vote for it on May the 7th. Ahmed Asher, Liberal Democrats, 3,183. Hall, Simon David, the Green Party, 1,237. Malik, Atik, Ahmed, Independent, 900. Redmond, Katie, the Conservative Party candidate, 12,949. <laughs> Redmond, Mohammed, Yazid, UK Independence Party, 5,129. <laughs> Shuka, Gavin, Labour and Cooperative Party, 18,700. <laughs> I therefore give public notice that the said Gavin Chuka is duly elected as a Member of Parliament for Luton South Parliamentary Constituency. Let me first thank a few people. Thank you to the returning officer, all of his staff who have worked heroically through the night, uh, also all the other candidates who have done themselves proud in this election. We all know what it is uh, to stand for election. Um, some of us are fortunate in this election, but others I'm sure will be in the future. Uh, let me also thank my brilliant agent, Francis Steer, my good friend and colleague, uh, Kelvin Hopkins, whose wisdom I find invaluable on a day-to-day -day basis, my party chair, John Whitaker, and many people that have made this result happen.